created this pandemic threat are the real danger facing America today. So let's look exactly, what exactly is the so-called bird flu? Let's look at it scientifically for just a minute. The bird flu is simply a slang term, folks, given to a specific strain of influenza virus. Specifically in biochemical terms, biological terms, is called H5N1 because of its RNA and DNA structure. The H5N1 virus, folks, is indeed unique to birds. Virologists have long determined, and now this is going back to the 1910s, 1920s, that H5N1 is indeed unique only to birds and is found naturally in most wild bird populations. Typically, it's not a problem with birds. It has zero mortality to the bird population and is absolutely, let me emphasize this, absolutely is not typically passed on to human hosts. Folks, it's only when the bird populations become overstressed due to either massive contamination of their environment or the overpopulation of a bird, bird flock does the cellular terrain of the bird flock change. The internal workings of the birds as a whole change. When the birds become stressed, their internal terrain changes, then this H5N1 virus can in fact become dangerous or even lethal to the bird population. When the bird dies, folks, this virus in fact evolves into a fungal parasite. Let me emphasize, a virus is the seed, the spore of a fungus. That's what a virus is, as opposed to a bacteria, which is a living one-celled organism, okay? A virus is the, is the microscopic seed or spores of specific funguses. So when the virus uh, evolves and uh, begins to affect a whole bird population, it helps Mother Nature to cull the flock to bring it back into the balance that is necessary to keep the bird itself, the bird genes itself intact. The fungal parasite that evolves from the influenza, H5N1, really helps to rapidly decompose the bird as well. It's part of nature's plan. The virus and the fungus uh, has been with the bird population since the day they first began to swim and fly. It's part of the system, part of the ecosystem of nature. Should not be feared, should not be something that we should fear as a, as a country, as a nation. So, why all this hype then? What I just said is true and I absolutely guarantee you that it is true. Why is there such hype over the bird flu? Now, there is a possibility, there is a way that the H5N1 bird influenza virus can infect humans, become, can become deadly to humans as well. And that is simply when the bird flu H5N1 mutates because of specific environmental toxic loads. Heavy toxins such as PCPs, such as other type of, of uh, neurotic type of gases. Those type of toxic chemicals can cause a mutation which can jump in from the bird to the human population. Now these mutations, I've got to emphasize, just never do occur naturally. It's only when we see human introduced toxins where humans have, have messed with mother nature basically that we see these mutations happen. Always keep in mind when you think about the bird flu folks that the so-called H5N1 virus is simply one of over 1,500 naturally benign viruses which are part of nature's life cycle. Did you know there was 1,500, over 1,500 different viruses that are benign to humans, absolutely benign? From another example perhaps is the parvovirus of a dog, 
a puppy gets it, it's deadly to a puppy. Humans have no effect on this virus whatsoever. Just like the, the, the parvo, parvo virus, H5N1, has indeed been a part of planet Earth for many, many thousands of years without, without causing massive human deaths or human what's called pandemics. All right? But wait a minute, didn't we have a pandemic in, in our history back in 1918? Well, yes we have had, and let me explain that to help you understand that. Because I promise you that you won't hear a, a talk show host talking about H5N1 bird flu without bringing home the fact that millions of Americans died from a 1918 pandemic. Folks, Americans, human beings, uh, and others all over the world have many different uh, strains of influenza viruses that affect humans negatively. But let me just tell you that. Just like the bird flu in birds, the only time influenza virus becomes deadly to humans is when the human body is toxic as well. When the human cellular terrain is out of balance. So we really shouldn't fear uh, a seasonal influenza virus at all. But Americans have been programmed in our minds, oh golly, we need to get an influenza shot every single single winter. The flu season is coming. Line up. Go to your local Mormon church stake center or wherever and get your flu vaccine. Get it done. Once again, only when outside pathogens are introduced uh, to the human, human uh, terrain do these viral organisms mutate into super deadly toxins. Folks, this is the truth you need to know. You've got to know this about the 1918 pandemic. Let's look and see exactly what happened back then. Between the, the, the decade of 1900 to 1912, Researchers granted and funded by John D. Rockefeller, mainly, primarily, began mass vaccination campaigns again in America. But you know, Americans didn't really buy into that. They didn't want to, to have this vaccine. They thought, well, we, we don't need this. Why should we have it? Primarily aimed at smallpox, uh, vaccination injections eventually evolved into influenza injections as well. So, while these vaccines were being produced, not many Americans wanted to voluntarily have a needle poked into their arm with some kind of germs being put into them. Well, here's where the first forced or mandatory vaccinations began to plague America. This happened uh, two years after the research was basically completed. In 1914, the so-called Great War begins in Europe, which the Great War we know today is World War I. The, the United States didn't really officially enter World War I until the year 1917. Uh, President Wilson eventually declared war on Germany following the pressure put on to him and Congress by the sinking of the Lusitania, the, the equivalent at that time of the Titanic, a massive, wonderfully built and equipped luxury cruise liner. Uh, this was sunk uh, by uh, German U-boats, uh, and uh, great outrage uh, occurred in the United States and Britain over that sinking. When the U.S. finally entered the war on the side of Great Britain and France, uh, in early 1917, the nation of Spain uh, allowed the United States military to establish training bases on Spanish soil. This is important to understand when you, under, when you realize that the 1918 virus pandemic was called the Spanish flu. This is the key to understanding where it got its name from, where it originated from in Spain. It originated specifically from the Spanish bases, U.S. military bases in Spain. 
As part of the mobilization for the war effort, in the spring and summer of 1917, America goes into full production of war material. Bullets, tanks, machine guns, all these new little uh, uh, me me mechanized warfare uh, inventions were produced. For the first time, American men are drafted, forced basically, into military service and then deployed for training in bases in Spain. This is very important to understand. For the very first time in U.S. history, all new recruits, Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, all new recruits are given mandatory vaccinations one of which is a very broad...